Forest Carbon Management and Policy is a partial yet crucial way to mitigate the negative effects of climate change. As a result, many resources exist to support optimizing a forest ability to offset anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases. However, forest carbon can burn. Combustion of forest fuels releases carbon into the atmosphere, and any investments in forest carbon are often threatened by the very phenomenon they seek to address, climate change, along with the past land management legacies have increased and will continue to increase the frequency, size, and severity of wildfires across large portions of the western United States. In the eastern U.S., a century of systematic fire exclusion and modern climates have transformed the fire-dependent barrens, savannas, and woodlands, once harboring incredibly diverse herbaceous layers into closed canopy forests dominated by fire-sensitive species. Such transformations have occurred ahead of predicted and increasingly realized increases in regional fire activity. Thus, in forests throughout the United States, carbon management can fail if fire is ignored. Currently, no educational programming exists to assist managers, owners, policymakers, and other forest stakeholders to navigate the complex and increasingly dynamic interactions between changing fire regimes, forest carbon management, and climate. That is, until now. Michigan State University's Forest Carbon and Climate Program, in collaboration with expertise from partners across the United States, including SUNY ESF, proudly introduces a new online course for understanding and managing fire's effects on forest carbon. The course provides an applied understanding of carbon, climate, and fire relationships to equip forest stakeholders with the information required to sustainably manage forest carbon under increasingly dynamic fire regimes. Globally, fire has influenced vegetation community development for nearly 500 million years. Ever since the evolution of terrestrial plants completed the fire triangle, adding fuel and adequate levels of atmospheric oxygen to existing ignition sources, fire has shaped how plants' communities are spatially distributed, the species they contain, structural attributes of forests, and the very way in which fundamental ecological processes occur. Perhaps there is no greater demonstration of fire's inextricable links to life on Earth than its role within the global carbon cycle. Understanding this requires understanding of what fire is. An exothermic reaction between carbon-based fuel and oxygen that yields energy, carbon dioxide, and water. The reverse of this reaction is photosynthesis, the mechanism by which plants extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and combine it with water to yield oxygen and the carbon-based sugars that support plant growth and thus nearly all life on Earth. Therefore, forest carbon management and policy that focuses exclusively on carbon storage and sequestration, or the result of photosynthesis, fails to fully recognize reversibility in the carbon cycle. Combustion is the yin to photosynthesis's yang, and any effective forest carbon management action or policy requires understanding both perspectives. For this reason, content developers utilize brainstorming and review sessions with an expert panel assembled across academic, extension, and other institutions with wild and fire expertise to identify gaps in manager and landowner understanding and outline a nationally focused and interactive e-module on forest carbon and fire management in a changing climate. The resulting course is divided into four major sections that cover foundational carbon and fire science, on the ground impacts of climate change on regional fire regimes, general strategies, approaches, and tactics for creating fire resilient forest carbon resources, and regional case studies that highlight real world demonstrations of course concepts. Specifically, the course details how changes in fire regime properties, the frequency, intensity, severity, seasonality, and spatial extent of fire alter how fire affects forest carbon across specific pools, including carbon stored in soils, below ground biomass, forest floor litter, dead wood, and above ground live biomass. High frequency, low severity fire often only releases carbon near the soil surface. In contrast, low frequency, high severity fire can release carbon across all major pools. Integrating fire awareness into forest carbon management begins with understanding historical fire regimes, this provides baseline structural, compositional, and distributional targets for various forest types that are likely to enhance the fire resilience and resistance of forest carbon. These targets must then be adjusted according to an applied understanding of how fire regimes have changed. Then, modeled projections of further future changes in fire regimes must be integrated. All such information is reviewed by region to enable effective carbon management. Despite this complexity, many strategies exist to mitigate forest carbon loss to wildfire. Principally, this includes the restoration of fire and fire surrogates or mechanical fuel reductions that initially reduce forest carbon 
but by doing so, make remaining forest carbon more resilient to often inevitable wildfire. Prescribe fire, manage wildfires, variable retention forest thinning, fuel mastication, mid-story removals, and combinations of such management can be used to reduce fuel loads, fuel continuity, wildfire risk and severity, and carbon emissions relative to wildfire. Further, such strategies offer greater stability in carbon stocks and many forests quickly recover or lost carbon by increased growth rates of residual trees. The best approach to carbon management under changing fire regimes depends on critically evaluating immediate carbon losses relative to longer term and regionally specific potential losses to wildfire. Although the benefits of these strategies are proven, many socio-ecological barriers impede implementation. The course not only discusses these barriers, but it provides resources and case studies from successful projects across the nation. Prescribed fires or controlled burns, those terms are kind of used interchangeably, are a way to mimic natural occurring wildfires. So uh, in places like the Albany Pine Bush, where we've been conducting controlled burns or prescribed fires since 1991, they're a way to um, reduce the fuel load um, in a controlled circumstance. So the inland pitch pine scrub oak barrens, that's the ecosystem that's here is a fire adapted ecosystem. So a lot of the, the plants and animals that live here thrive under the disturbance of wildfires. And we suppress wildfires because this uh, landscape is in what's called the wildland urban interface. We're surrounded by infrastructure, roads, businesses, and communities and um, conducting controlled burns are a way to safely mimic wildfire. So, This addition to Michigan State University's Forest Carbon and Climate Program's world-renowned curriculum will equip stakeholders with the knowledge required to make forest management strategies carbon, climate, and wildfire aware. Awareness of regional trends in forest carbon, climate, and fire, awareness of existing and emerging adaptive or mitigative forest management solutions, and awareness of variation across forest ecosystem types will allow stakeholders to better ensure the resiliency of forest carbon investments. Moreover, manager-led applications of the knowledge provided will likely create economic, recreational, aesthetic, and cultural benefits that extend well beyond managed forests. Michigan State University's Forest Carbon and Climate Program, in collaboration with partnered expertise, invite you to share in this knowledge to make such benefits a reality in forests across the United States.